slither and slide Come out in the open and they run and hide It takes all kinds to live in Buck City Some are weird and some are pretty Come on down, let's meet in Buck City Don't let them bug you There's nothing to be afraid of Bugs can be fun We're all friends here so come on down, let's meet in Buck City With Christina Ritchie Dr. Art It don't forget me, but she's Seagull Hi, and welcome to Bug City. We have an especially fun show for you today. We're going to personally introduce you to every bug and insect we can think of that you might find inside, outside, and around your home. Hey, I'm ready for them. Come on, bring them on. No, Bugsy, we are not going to find them so we can squash them. We're going to find them so we can get to know them, by their names, as a matter of fact. Good grief. Who let Bugsy have a fly swatter? Oh, come on, I got a license for it. Hi, Dr. Art. This is Dr. Art Evans, Bug City's own entomologist. That means he's an insect expert. Hi, Christina. Today's show is one nobody should miss. You know why? Yeah, because I'm in it, duh. <laughs> what a question. Well, let's say the other reason why is that you're going to learn a lot about insects who share our home and yard every day and every night, whether you know it or not. I've heard some incredible numbers about the amount of bugs compared to people. There are approximately 100 million insects on Earth for every one human being. Imagine that. Yikes! How many for every one of me? I don't think anyone has ever tried to figure that one out. If we're going to meet the house and garden creatures we spend our lives with, we might as well start in the house. You'll recognize most of these animals, and you'll probably despise a few. But take a better look. They may not be as bad as you think. For the most part, insects and spiders like to come inside the house, especially at night, for the same reasons we do. It's dry, protected, and a comfortable temperature. This mother of pearl moth is drawn by the lights from your windows or porch and may fly in the first chance it gets. If this daddy long legs or harvestman is persistent, it may find an opening. Although it looks like a spider, it is not. It does not have venom, nor does it spin silk. Daddy Longlegs and other arachnids use their eight legs to crawl along outside until they finally find a way in, through a vent or other opening. Another harmless arachnid that likes to settle under our sinks, up in corners, or inside the closet is the cellar spider. It often spends its entire life cycle, from hatching, to adulthood, to laying eggs, right in our very own homes. While most of the creatures that invite themselves into our homes never do any damage, others are true pests. If you pick up a tick outside, you might end up with a serious illness. The tick injects an anesthetic just as it pierces your skin so that it can drink blood for up to 10 minutes before it's even felt. When it's full, it merely drops off and rolls away until the next time it gets hungry for blood. These soft-bodied, harmless-looking little creatures are termites, the most damaging to our homes of any insect. They never come in ones or twos. They live in colonies of up to tens of thousands. They also reproduce faster than they die off. Literally, the only way humans have found to stop them is all-out chemical warfare.
Houseflies are another familiar problem, especially in summer. They carry bacteria and germs, which they deposit wherever they land. Controlling them is another losing battle for humans. No matter how many you swat or spray, there always seems to be one more to get. What we don't realize is that there is a whole world of insects living with us, which we almost never see. This is the larva of the carpet beetle, which eats the fibers of our rugs and carpets. From our vantage point, at most, they look like little specks of dirt. We're lucky if the vacuum cleaner even finds them. The inside of the vacuum cleaner is a perfect environment for a tiny arachnid called the dust mite. There are, in fact, all sorts of mites living with us. Bed mites, which feed on skin and dried mucus from our bodies, infest most of our beds, no matter how clean we keep them. In fact, there may be up to 200 million of these minute critters in an average household bed. Fleas. Now, if these weren't itchy, biting bloodsuckers, we'd regard them as truly amazing animals. In an empty house, flea larvae can stay immature, feeding on old skin flakes in the carpet for as long as two years. When a warm-blooded host, such as people or our pets arrive, the heat and carbon dioxide from their bodies trigger the larvae to mature into adults. Fleas, though they may look strange and unique, are true insects with similar basic features to an ant or a beetle. They have three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. It's the muscles in the thorax and legs which power these incredible jumpers. As insects, fleas also have two antennae for sensing their surroundings and six legs. Unlike most insects, they have flat, smooth bodies to help them move easily through hair, and they have no wings. Wings would only get in the way of reaching a meal of blood through the furry skin of a mammal. The flea's spring-loaded legs can carry them up to 200 times their own body length. Their leaps would be the equivalent, for us, of jumping a quarter of a mile into the air. They are drawn to the warm, dry atmosphere of our homes, especially since some warm-blooded body will eventually happen by and provide dinner. Fleas, believe it or not, are much more dangerous to your health than these insects are. Everybody has met a cockroach these relatives of grasshoppers and crickets, through no fault of their own, are among the most hated creatures on Earth. People who really know and understand cockroaches have some surprisingly good things to say about them. We are lucky enough to have one of those people as our guest on Bug City today. This is David George Gordon, a leading expert on cockroaches and other misunderstood critters. He knows everything. Well, not everything, but I do know a lot about cockroaches. You know, Cockroaches are a creature that we love to loathe. And there have actually been studies that show that people hate cockroaches more than they hate rattlesnakes or spiders or even bats. But when people hate cockroaches, or they say they hate them, they're really talking about one or two, or maybe at the most, 10 different kinds of cockroaches. Everyone winds up seeing the same pesty guys, like the American cockroaches here, or the Oriental cockroaches over here. They don't know that there are actually about 4,000 different kinds of cockroaches worldwide. These are Madeira cockroaches from Central and South America. They arrived here by way of the Spanish explorers, but actually came up into New York in the 1950s, where they caused quite a stir. These are giant Brazilian cockroaches. They also call them death's head cockroaches, because if you look at their backs, it looks like they have a little skull on their backs. Ones like these the hissing cockroaches from Madagascar actually make really nice pets. When do they hiss? You know, if they're, dis if they're really disturbed and they think someone's going to bother them, they uh -huh. make a hissing noise, hoping that you'll drop them and they can run away. It's hard to get these guys to hiss on cue. Does it sound like a cat? It actually sounds like a little wind-up toy to me. <laughs> 
In our homes, we see cockroaches in their worst. But in the wild, they're important to the way things function. They're plant pollinators. They actually go out and help plants uh, germinate seeds. Oh, like bees. That's right, like bees or butterflies. But aren't they really germy? Well, yes and no. When they studied cockroaches, they find all kinds of bacteria and viruses on them. But it's really hard to say whether they transmit those to anybody else, whether they pass them on. Why do we always find them in our homes? You know, I've hardly seen a cockroach anywhere else. In our homes, we make uh, great environments for them where it's always warm, there's enough moisture to keep mm -hmm. them happy, lots of places to hide, and plenty of food. So once they get into our homes, they can really multiply, and you can uh -huh. find hundreds and hundreds of cockroaches there. Mm -hmm. What's the best way to get rid of cockroaches? Well, the best thing you can do is make your home a little less comfortable for the cockroaches that want to live in it. The one thing that people often overlook are the bowls that their dog or cat mm. are eating out of. They leave food out. When you're gone, the cockroaches like to sneak in there. So I tell people, if they're going to leave a bowl out for their pet, take another larger bowl with soapy water in it, and then set this bowl right inside of there. This actually creates a moat, so the cockroaches can't swim across it and get in there, but your pet still can eat. Mm -hmm. You know, they've actually done studies that show that cockroaches can go for about three months without food, but only about two or three weeks without water. So the other important thing to do is go around and find out where cockroaches are getting their water. Uh, there might be a leaky pipe under a sink or something. Um, there might be a sweaty pipe if you're living in a warm area where moisture gathers on the outside of it. If you can control those sources, you'll have a really easy time convincing cockroaches to go somewhere else. <laughs> Well, we really appreciate you coming to visit, and your cockroaches, too. Yeah, take them with you. Oh, yeah. Yes, and thank you for all the good news. Now I'm happy to say that I'll never hate cockroaches again. <laughs> Great. Now let's meet some of the fabulous insects you can find just outside your house in any flower bed or garden. This is a really fantastic array of characters. Oh, boy, soup's on. I'm ready for anything you got, Doc. Bugsy, I thought hot dogs were your favorite. Mm, Mom. Well, how about a corn dog? Oh, ho, 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 now you're talking. You got mustard? Oh, boy. I'll eat it raw. <laughs> I think your critters will be safe now. No matter where you look, summer or winter, day or night, you'll find loads of life in your garden. The most common insects you will see are ants of many kinds. These ants love sweets. In exchange for sugary drops from buds of this plant, the ants will protect it from other insects that might try to eat the plant itself. Flowering plants also rely on insects to survive. Bees are vital to these plants. As bees go from flower to flower gathering pollen, they also carry and distribute that pollen, enabling flowering plants to reproduce. Butterflies, too, are more than just pretty pairs of wings. They are also pollinators, and so help to create more and more of the flowery sanctuaries where they can find food and find mates to reproduce their own kind. Unfortunately, the young of butterflies and moths, that is, caterpillars, are among the biggest eaters of garden plants. Beetles, too, if they arrive in large numbers, are capable of reducing whole plants and even trees and shrubs to bare stems and branches. Now, a lot of people, when they see insects in their yard, the first thing they want to do is spray them with bug killer. But in a healthy garden, chances are you have other insects who are already on the job controlling your pests. No matter what kind of garden or yard you have, any bugs you find in it are a designated meal for something else. For example, take what can be the most damaging of garden pests, the aphids. Though sap-sucking aphids like these can get so thick they literally encrust your flowers, nature has provided a whole host of enthusiastic predators in the garden. 
For example, aphids are the favorite food of ladybugs. A single ladybug may consume a hundred of them in a day. Aphids are also popular with the larval forms of several insects. Ladybug larvae can go through twice as many aphids in a day as an adult can. This tiny insect is a hoverfly. Its larva, in order to grow, will sit on a stalk and eat aphids as if they were just so many snacks. The larva needs a lot of food, and a herd of aphids is the perfect and unsuspecting solution to its appetite. If beetles are plaguing your garden, there may be no need to worry. Every few feet, a spider has probably set up a sticky web, and beetles, to a spider, are just as tasty as anything else. Praying mantises, though they are so well disguised we rarely see them, are also present in most gardens. And like spiders, they are such fierce, meat-eating predators that they are rarely picky about what they will kill for dinner. If it moves, it's fair game. And that game is often what we would consider a garden pest. If your garden is being eaten by caterpillars, certain wasps, believe it or not, are the best friends you can have. This tiny wasp is about to turn this giant hawk moth caterpillar into a living nursery by injecting into its soft body the eggs that she's carrying. No matter how much the caterpillar eats, it cannot mature. The wasp larvae inside are absorbing the nutrients as fast as the caterpillar can ingest them. When the larvae are ready to pupate, they will eat through the walls of its body to spin their cocoons. On this one caterpillar, these fluffy white cocoons will produce scores of new wasps. Wasps of several kinds are good for controlling caterpillars. This one can kill and drag back to its burrow several of the gluttonous caterpillars each day. Wasps in all their varieties are truly helpful insects outdoors. The next time you see a wasp trying to steal something from your picnic, think of it as a well-deserved treat for one of nature's hardest working pest exterminators. How many times in a week do you pass by a common patch of dirt or leaf litter? Do you ever really look at it or wonder what might be living in there? Well, after this, I hope you will. I dug this up in my own backyard. This is a good way to discover what kinds of critters live all around us that we just take for granted. I'm ready, Dr. Art. Where do we begin? Just dig in and we'll find out. Now, it's important to wear gloves when you're out digging around in the yard because sometimes you'll run into something that bites or there might be a sharp object in the soil and you don't want to hurt yourself. And usually you want to dig into soil that's moist like this with a lot of organic matter or plant matter. Here, go ahead and dig in and see what we can find. Is there anything in particular you'd like to see? I want to find a worm. Well, we'll see. Oh, look, there's one, one right there. Now, they're invertebrates, but they're not insects. Right. And over here, oh, we've got a snail. Mm-hmm. There's a nice pill bug. There we go. There's a centipede. Right there. Yuck. Oh, there's one. Well, here's a blue, uh, blue sow bug. Look at these. Yuck. What are those? I have no idea. They're not yucks. Those are termites. And that's a soldier right there. Look at the big mandibles. Those are the guys that defend the termites colony. And the little ones are just normal termites? Those are the worker termites. Oh. Here are some of the examples of animals that you'll find in your backyard. How are these guys related to insects? Well, that's a good question, Christina. Um, insects belong to a much larger group of animals called arthropods. And arthropods include insects, arachnids, millipedes, centipedes, and crustaceans. Let's take a look at the insects. They have three body parts and six legs. Arachnids have eight legs. Millipedes and centipedes both have long, skinny bodies that are divided into pieces or segments. On the millipedes, each body segment has four legs. 
and millipedes are herbivores. They eat plants. Centipedes have two legs per body segment, and they're predators. They eat insects and other small animals. Now, the famous roly-polies, pill bugs and sow bugs, are crustaceans. They are related to lobsters and crabs. Now, roly-polies come in two forms here in the United States. One is called the pill bug. Those are the ones that can roll up into a little pill. And the ones that don't roll up very well are called sow bugs. Both pill bugs and sow bugs have 14 legs. And, being crustaceans, they have two pairs of antennae. Well, if we keep all these things in mind, in order to be an arthropod, you have to have your skeleton on the outside, and you have to have at least six legs. So, can a slug or a snail be an arthropod? Mm -mm. They don't have any legs. Right. What about earthworms? Can they be arthropods? No. No, those are very different kinds of animals. <laughs> We have a pencil alert up. Get your pencils and paper ready for an exciting demonstration. We're going to dig a pitfall trap. And a pitfall trap is made simply by digging a hole in the ground and take a deli cup or a barger container and just sink it inside. In fact, we need to dig that a little more. And you want the lip of the cup to just come up over the surface. So when an insect walks along, it can easily fall in. Now, you can put some leaves in the bottom or simply take a paper towel and fold it up and put it inside and spray it with a little water. That'll give the animals a place to hide till you come back to find them. And remember, you're going to find different things falling in during the day than you will at night. Another good idea is to put your pitfall trap up against a fence or a wall. You'll catch more animals that way. And you're all set to see what other kinds of animals that you might be missing in your backyard. Wow, I'm back and just in time for the best part of the show. That's my part, the amazing, the incredible factualities. Hey there, gang. <laughs> You wait till you hear what I got out of these books from the library. Now, just for example, did you happen to know that all termites, did you know this, are actually blind? Did you know that in folk medicine, dried cockroaches are used for medicine? Yeah. They're used to help stop bleeding and even heal bone fractures. Well, can you imagine that? Did you know that the Tropical cockroach holds the all-time insect running record. Three and a half miles per hour. Wow. And there are more insects than all other animals combined. That there are three out of four animals on Earth are insects. That's a fact. And that only a few kinds of insects have ears. And their ears are very rarely on their heads. This is Bugsy Seagull bringing you the factualities. See ya, folks. Good work, Bugsy. Mm. That's all the time we have for this Bug City. I hope you learned as much as I did. And special thanks to David George Gordon for visiting us today and for bringing his friends. See you again. Bye-bye. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. <laughs>